pocket. Our highly trained analysts here at Vocative ignore nothing. Not even these intriguing vacation photos posted by some German women traveling to Africa. The pics raised questions. The answers turned out to be pretty black and white. These women are thousands of miles from home, looking to get laid. And if they're lucky, maybe even love. In many ways, the Maasai and Samburu warriors, known collectively as the Muran, still live like their tribes have for centuries. But these days, they're hunting very different game. White women from all over the world who travel here in search of the Moran's legendary lovemaking powers, their sexual prowess. They are very attractive, very nice, many of them. Every white woman would love to have sex with the Moran. They say that they know how to have sex and they know how to handle women. And they have been coming and coming and coming. The warriors all live together in a kind of fraternity house a few miles from the beach. And every morning they go looking for love in all the right places. Zamburu Masai, they are coming in the hope to find a Muzungu. You will not say I'm a prostitute. No, he is a man. But he's looking for white ones. <laughs> yeah, like a prostitute. But never he will say so. They think that having white women is having wealth. But the, the, the white women also are chasing for love tender and care. Oh, here, what else? That was also from the beginning. This German woman asked that we not reveal her name. She moved to Mombasa full-time in the early 1990s and took a local warrior into her home and her bed. For a time, she was happy. It was a very good time. He was helping me, he was busy, he was cooking. He was very good. That's right. One of these tribal warriors was cooking and cleaning around her house. I really was falling in love with him. Who wouldn't? But to paraphrase Chris Rock, no matter how attractive the African warrior, somewhere there's a white woman sick of having sex with him. She make tak tak tak, finish a, a shower, and then it's finish. A what? What's this? Dissatisfied white women aren't the only hazard facing the Moran. Like their ancestors. They are now in a battle with a potentially career-killing foe. Sating the desires of white women is a business here. And as with any business, there is competition. Local gangs of rusters, also called beach boys, used to just sell beads and boat rides. Now they're offering rides on their beach-toned bodies as well. This is our office where we get daily bread. The business have gone down for Morans due to stiff competition with the Rastas. To gain an advantage seducing their clients, the Rastas use voodoo magic to attract white women. We go to the witch doctor to practice voodoo so that if you come on the beach, she, she's really crying. She was looking for you the whole day so that she want only to, to stay with you so that you can make love with her. You can get a lot of money. These beach boys headed to the witch doctor and paid about $25 to have a spell cast on them, enhancing their sexual powers. For another $25, the witch doctor took them to what he called a holy place for a special blessing. So, uh, do you guys feel any different now than when you walked in? Yeah. Do you feel that you have more power than you had before? So if we go there and then you can see big difference. Are you okay? All it is good. The voodoo seemed to work. These beach boys now had their A-game 
not so much for the Warriors. You couldn't help feeling a bit sad for them. Sex is a man's work here. It brings money. It brings pleasures. But the Moran and Beach Boys sex for hire trade is not always healthy competition. Some of the female sex tourists insist on going native, meaning no condoms, even though the HIV AIDS rate in Mombasa is nearly 20%. When they pay, they need satisfaction. The women don't want condoms. For the women, it's all part of the thrill, the sensual danger on a faraway beach where lust and money intertwine. Seaside fantasies so far away from home. Fuck.